Hello and welcome friend. I am excited you are here. I've got a really quick tutorial to share with you today, but is it, it is super important when it comes to saving your PDFs for online viewing. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever downloaded a PDF from someone or opened a PDF online on your phone or maybe on your tablet? and you are met with this um, alarming PDF that looks like it's got these crazy neon colors and all of the images and you can just tell that something is not right with the document. Um, I definitely have, I have made this mistake in my own uh, PDFs in the past and uh, when you open it on your phone it just looks cuckoo bananas with all these crazy neon colors. The reason why that happens is because um, it really is, we're talking about using Apple products here. Um, so if you have an iPhone or an iPad, um, this is where the big problem comes in. And unfortunately today, or fortunately, whichever way you want to look at it, um, a lot of people use Apple products. They have iPhones, um, you know, every time an iPhone comes out, like people are dying to get them. Um, a lot of people use Apple products. So what I want to teach you today is how to save your PDF for perfect viewing every single time it's viewed online, whether that is through an Apple product on an iPhone or iPad or even um, an Android or um, on a desktop. It doesn't matter where you open it from. I want you to not make a big mistake and have some really weird looking neon PDFs when your customers or your readers or whoever opens your beautifully designed PDF. We want to make sure that it looks the way it's supposed to look on every single device. Am I right? So let's get to it. I promise you this is super quick and it is totally worth your time in watching this. Okay, so the PDF that you see here is actually for my welcome packet template. Um, it is a template that uh, service-based business owners can use when they are first kicking off their service with their clients. So basically it's a, it's a package that you can send in the mail or you can even send it online if you wanted to. And it gives lots of good information like your office policies, a timeline of events with how your service is gonna run so it answers their questions right off the bat. Um, and it's got a thank you card and, and lots of good stuff in there. So what I do for every time I sell a welcome packet, they get a copy of this welcome packet resource guide. It's a PDF in their downloadable file. And um, so I just wanted to show you how exactly I would save this PDF to make sure that for any reason, if they were to find this PDF and look at it on their phone or their Apple um, iPad, that it would not look horrible. Uh, so, and this works for every single PDF on the planet. Um, so what you're going to do, I'm in Adobe Illustrator right now. This works for Photoshop, works for InDesign, it should work. Um, depending on what other programs you're using, we'd have to see. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do it in Illustrator and it looks the same in other uh, programs as well that you would create a PDF in. So let's go for it and you should be able to figure out if you're in some other sort of design program, um, some sort of similar process. Basically what we're going to look for is to change the output of the way that we save the PDF. So I'm going to show you how to do that here. So we're going to go to File. Um, we want to save as. And we are going to save it as a PDF. So I'm going to save it as an Adobe PDF. So I'm going to hit save. Uh, let's go here. Hit save. And you're going to see this little window pop up with some PDF um, options for how you can save it. Now, again, this should look the same in Photoshop and InDesign and other Adobe products uh, like that you can get off the Creative Cloud or whatever. Um, but really what you want to look for, no matter what program you're using, is the output. Um, so it doesn't matter in this case right now what kind of PDF we're saving. Um, but we are going to look for in the output 
the color conversion. This is what we're going to talk about today is our color conversion. We're going to change um, the default way to save a PDF is with no color conversion. Um, just to save it as is, but we do want to convert the colors. We want to convert it so that way if it is opened on an Apple product, it will not uh, it will not go crazy. The colors will not go crazy. Basically, Apple has its own uh, way of reading in color and it um, so you need to like specifically set it for the Apple. Um, RGB colors. So we are going to convert this to a destination, convert to destination. In the destination, we are going to select, this is so easy y'all, in destination you're going to click the drop down, you're going to scroll down, and you are going to see Apple RGB in this. There's lots of different options for um, different programs that you could be opening your PDF in. Um, but we are going to change the destination to Apple RGB. Um, and so that is literally the what you need to do. No matter where you are, you need to find the output of where your PDF is. You need to convert the colors to a destination, and we're going to convert it to Apple RGB. You would hit Save PDF, and boom. You now are saving a PDF that if you were to say attach it to an email or put it on put it as a media file on your website or have it or send it um, anyway online for someone to view if they were to click open on their iPhone or their iPad or whatever um, Apple product they are using it would look the same the way that it's supposed to look right in front of you right now. Um, and again, like it's not going to change it if somebody is using a PC or an Android or any other sort of um, digital product. It will look the way it's supposed to look across every single device, but this just really ensures that it also looks um, perfect the way that you want it to on every single device, including those ever popular Apple iPhones and iPads. So go ahead start saving your PDFs this way every time and you will never run into that problem again. Um, I hope you are having a good day and I hope this was really helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at megan at meganmartin.net and I will help you out. All right, sounds good. See you next time.